Shum my friendly eye and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And I'm continuing in the wetland safari park today with a pride themed Asian small clawed otter habitat. And this is technically the second part of the build. So I'll link the first part, the underwater part in the eye cards and in the description if you're interested in seeing some of that but let's get into today's build and i'm starting off with the animal talk and i wanted to do like a seating area for the animal talk and i thought the flat pathing wasn't really like that interesting so i wanted to play around with the pathing to do a two tier two layered seating so I could have four sets of seating area instead of two and that was actually really fiddly I thought doing two layers would be all right with using the align to grid option but it was actually more difficult than I thought it would be especially because I've got so many different height of path I've got like a ground path going underground and an elevated path connected to the ground path so it was hard to get those stairs and everything to connect properly because I've got so many different paths already there and to get the stairs to be shorter like they are now instead of like the regular four meter length I went into the path settings and right at the bottom of the path settings you can select elevated length and if you tick that box you can make the elevated length however long or short you want so i went for the shorter setting so i could have smaller stairs but that elevated length section could be really useful for things like nice smooth long ramps or you could make like shorter stairs to go up just a small length the elevated length setting can really upgrade your path placement and i'm putting in the animal talk seating i wish you could place these using advanced move but it's kind of like the benches where they will align to the path i'm hoping they will still be accessible because the edge of the seat is quite close to the edge of the path and to connect the seating to the animal talk it's kind of like connecting seating to the restaurants you just click on the animal talk object and connect seating through the ui on that and then it'll go green if it's connected and if like me you were struggling to put the barriers on the animal talk seating i used position snap and position snap rotation to automatically sort of place these barriers along the animal talk and they obviously then snap in exactly the same position on all four of the animal talk seating the position snap and the position snap rotation is also helpful when placing things on restaurant tables as well so the little candles from the europe pack if you put precision snap on they will snap into the tables right in the center and that saves so much time i love doing that if you put it on for placing the umbrellas on the picnic tables it'll snap perfectly into the center of that too that'll save some time as well for you and because this is a pride themed build and I didn't want to just have the pride theme for the underwater part, I wanted to connect it all together because this is one big habitat really. I wanted to make the animal talk seating rainbow as well and it is flexi colour, you can change some aspects of the seating but they're quite plain. So I thought I would use the East Asia style flexi colour wood panels or wood planks to decorate the sides of the animal talk seating in a rainbow pattern and have it evenly spaced uh, along the sides of the animal talk seating. I went with two steps per colour. That was like the most even 
evenly spaced I could figure it out because I counted the steps and obviously divided that by seven because I was going with the Roy D. Biv colours instead of the six for the classic LGBT pride flag because a big part of Pride Month is of course about celebrating the LGBTQIA plus community but it's also about education and raising awareness about the issues of the LGBTQIA plus community so I thought I would go with a more education focus part of the habitat in this section so we've got the underwater sort of celebration with the bright neon lights and it's a little bit more fun and then above ground with all of the pride flag flower garden we'll have the guests education the game is going to just educate the guests on the asian small clawed otter but i think a part of this is always your imagination as well so yes in game the guests are only going to learn about the otters but really it could be any sort of talk or education perspective for the guests in this area so we could be talking about the lgbtqia plus community and how even some animals pair off with the same gender like i know in a london zoo i can't remember which one it was maybe it is just london zoo there's a pair of male penguins that are together and as we know from last year's pride float the bonobo monkeys tend to not really mind where they pair off in a way they will pair off with the same gender or the opposite gender they are kind of promiscuous me being a so not like talking about these things is fine <laughs> and the colors for the rainbow on the animal talk seating i duplicated the color numbers from the colors that i used for the fabric draping over the underwater path so everything would match in nicely like rainbow's a rainbow sure but i wanted the exact color shades so everything would feel consistent and match in i've used the smaller wood planks to cover just underneath the steps so I've kept the wood from the actual animal talk uncovered but I've just covered the white like the cement plaster texture with the panels and obviously trying to line them up with the colors of the rainbow on the side and then once I'd done that I was having a little look and I thought the sides looked a little odd white too so I just dragged the side panels in to cover the inside edges of the steps but I made sure not to cover the lights on the inside of the steps so it would still illuminate I think having those small details really makes a build sometimes it feels done but it just needs those extra little bits to feel properly complete but I am a bit of a per <laughs> perfectionist so maybe others might have been happy with just the outside but I just wanted to add those extra little details covering the steps completely in the colors so it feels like the steps of the rainbow and this is like a nice little easter egg I guess in planet zoo did you know that each different path texture has a different railing for the stairs or elevated railing you can even have like a ground railing if you want and that'll give you different fences sort of in the game so you can create different barriers for your habitats using the path railings some of my favorites are the patterned railings because there's nothing like that in the game so if you wanted a custom barrier you could actually use a path fence and most animals won't actually be able to cross the path barriers even some climbing animals won't be able to cross those path barriers so it may even save you some money if you were playing in other game modes other than sandbox I wanted to use these wood panels to match in with the pier, market pier, keep all the wood textures matching nicely, um, keep it consistent without it looking too 
disjointed with the rest of the zoo. We have the water theme that goes along with all of the wetlands theme, but I still wanted the animal talk education point to match in with some of the other things in the zoo. And because the pier is mainly guest focused, and so is this, it's nice to have the same textures. And it hides some of the gaps that I have between the paths and the not so nice looking underneath of the path for the more elevated side. But just as I'm getting comfortable in the wetlands theme, there was a bit of a surprise last week. I was not expecting it in the slightest, but a new DLC has been announced for next week. So next week we'll have the DLC overview, the animal overview, as I do every new DLC. But this one is focused on conservation. It is the conservation pack. And I'm really looking forward to this one because it has lots of build items. Of course, new animals as well. I'm really looking forward to the seeing the horse and... Oh, oh, and we have a leopard. That was the other one I was really excited about because I am definitely a cat person and I really love the big cats in Planet Zoo. And I wanted this habitat to have a slight beachy feel to go with the coral reef underneath the water or under the water. I still wanted this habitat to be kind of beachy, but I didn't want it to be the type of beach that I built for the California sea lions. And because I have a lot of rock placement under the water, I thought this could be a kind of rocky beach. To make natural rock formations can be kind of tricky in this game. There's lots of different variations of rocks that we have. It's always easier to match your rock with the biome your zoo map is in. So this map is a temperate map. So I picked the temperate rocks because if you haven't got your placement quite right or you're not really happy with how the rock placement looks, if you then paint underneath, like in the terrain that you've placed the rocks on, in the two different rock terrain paint, the rough and the smooth, kind of vary it around, you can kind of blend your rocks into the terrain a little bit more and that can make a big difference. Placing the rocks at odd angles and having sharp points can make it feel a little bit more natural as well. And of course, always lower your rocks into the ground. Don't just place the rock on top of the ground. They're usually flat, aren't they, on the bottom, a rock? Or it's usually buried in the ground, so it looks flat. So placing a rock that's not flat on the bottom, just directly on the terrain, never really looks the nicest. So if you lower them down, either using the shift key or advanced move, which is X, it can make the rock look a little bit more natural. And the other thing that I like to use a lot is the really flat rocks. They tend to be on the end of the list of rocks. And if you then lower those into the ground a little bit, have the just the texture coming through, it can really help with like blending. My last tip for rock placement is add some grassy small plants in the cracks of the rocks in a natural environment, you would have some plant life kind of trying to grow in the gaps of some rocks or in the cracks of some rocks. It's nice to have just that little pop of green, not the grass terrain paint, but just small plants. And this fence I actually duplicated from the path by the pier that I created and I thought this would fit in with the beach theme as well because I find this is like kind of a beachy driftwood sun bleached wood and I wanted this to be kind of like a rickety beach fence so I didn't have it all nice and smooth straight fence kind of made it rickety and curved around where I'd painted the small amount of sand down because it's still like a sand part of a beach. 
Maybe I should have broken some of the edges so it would look like it was kind of weathered. But this is kind of like a false barrier because the <laughs> Asian small clawed otters can actually walk completely under this fence. This is just for a design to make it look like it's a separate beach. And lastly, or kind of lastly anyway, they needed more hard shelter. And I was trying to think of something that I could tie in with the underwater path and with the beach theme and the rainbow theme for a hard shelter. And this isn't technically hard per se because I've used fabric and these fabrics match in with the draping fabrics that I have over the underwater tunnel but I wanted to make it a little bit more festival themed I don't know I've never been to a festival food festival yes but I thought it'd be interesting to do these triangular pieces because I've never really used them before and I had this idea of doing fun angled type shapes with them as well so I played around with the angles of the triangle fabric pieces and I started with angle snap on to make it easier for myself <laughs> to kind of line the pieces to one another because I wanted it to kind of feel like a wave like an angled wave go with the beachy theme but make it kind of feel a little bit more interesting I tried to go with like a certain point matching up with another point so for the red one the one corner was the highest and then the other two were lower so then I tried to align that next corner with the orange up with the red and just make it a fun angled pattern so it wasn't just flat to give it more of a party festival vibe I thought I would add some fairy lights string lights on the longer edges of the fabric pieces and I coloured the string lights in the colour of the fabric and the colour of the fabric next to it so I could have the rainbow lighting on the floor. I was looking at the animal talk and I was thinking maybe the guests wouldn't actually be able to hear the educator all that well from the back row of seating so I thought I would add some speakers in along the edges of the animal talk pier area. It also kind of ties in with the festival performance vibe of Pride as well. It is a celebration. You do get live artists in a Pride event. So it's kind of cool having these speakers in. They will play music when there's not an animal talking, but then we can kind of imagine that once the animal talk starts, the educator will then be speaking over the speakers so that the guests can hear the educator do their animal talk but yep that is the pride themed habitat completed now two parts but i think they work well separate and together i hope you've enjoyed these rainbow pride themed builds uh if we weren't getting the conservation pack literally next week mind-boggling. I would do more rainbow theme builds but of course LGBTQIA plus communities don't just stop celebrating just because it's not June anymore so uh, along the way I will add in some more pride themed things and just like last week I have included some resources for LGBTQIA plus charities and information about certain things along the theme of pride and if you enjoyed this video and you think the otters are absolutely adorable because I know I do let me know in the comments and let me know whether you're excited about the conservation pack coming next week and which animal are you most looking forward to seeing and as always I will be doing a overview of that DLC next week. If you enjoyed the video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you'd like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I upload speed builds on Wednesdays and shorts tutorials on Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye!